Johnny presents the Milton Berle Show. Make no mistake, of all leading cigarettes, Philip Morris, and only Philip Morris, is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists as definitely less irritating. No other cigarette can make that statement. From Radio City in New York, here is the Milton Berle Show. With Bert Telton, Jack Albertson, Mary Ship, Johnny Gibson, Charlie Irving, Billy Sands, Al Kelly, our singing star Dick Farney, Ray Block and his orchestra, and yours truly, Frank Gallup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we salute the coming of spring with our annual spring musical festival. We can't bring you the first robin of spring, but we can bring you the man who will lay the first egg. And here he is, Milton Berle. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies. Ah, spring. Beautiful spring. <laughs> I mean, New York is wonderful in the spring. Every, everything is green. Then the Jamaica racetrack opens and all the green disappears. <laughs> I mean, I'm all set for the new season. Really, I got this suit for the spring. You should have seen what I got for the mattress. <laughs> uh, well, that's dead. I, uh... <laughs> oh, spring... Spring, that's when a young man feels like doing what he gets slapped for trying to do all winter. <laughs> I'll never forget the time. Earl, you know, what is this juvenile cockamania about spring? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gallup, don't you know it's spring? <laughs> it's spring, Mr. Gallup. Can't, can't you feel it? Doesn't it send the embalming fluid racing through your veins? <laughs> I mean, Mr. Gallup, don't you notice it? Even the air is different. Only while this program is on. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, please, don't aggravate me. What a week I've had. My apartment is a shambles. You've been spring cleaning? No, looking for my 4F card. <laughs> how, uh, how, thank you, friends. <laughs> how about you, Mr. Gallup? Do you think they'll give you back your commission in the wax? <laughs> They should. You're waxier than ever. <laughs> waxier than ever. That's no laugh, is it? <laughs> Must be people out there. I hear snoring. <laughs> but spring, Mr. Gallup, is now officially here in New York. I saw the first sign yesterday. A snow shovel finally reached the Bronx. Ah, <laughs> uh, this... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... <laughs> friends from Simpson Street. Ah, oh, this, this drowsy spring weather, everybody can sleep except my poor brother Frank. He has horrible nightmares. He keeps dreaming I'm not working. <laughs> Don't laugh. Those nightmares are serious. I just read that Freddie Martin had a nightmare, woke up screaming. He dreamt Tchaikovsky was alive and had a good lawyer. <laughs> uh, but tell us, tell us, Tell us, Mr. Gallup, sir, doesn't the coming of spring mean anything to you? Oh, but it does. It does? This week, my club celebrated its spring music festival. Your club? Yes, the Cachaturian Emergency Committee to keep popcorn machines out of the lobby of Carnegie Hall. <laughs> you, you had a spring music festival? Yes, we had our annual outing at Feigenbaum's Camp Beethoven on Lake Costellanitz. Feigenbaum's... What's it? Feigenbaum? Feigenbaum. Feigenbaum. Yes. Sounds like an expensive place. Well, of course, we got the special rate. Special rate? What's that? It's cheaper, but you have to dance with Feigenbaum's daughter. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and uh, how's the food? Uh, what's the difference after dancing with Feigenbaum's daughter? Who can eat? <laughs> <laughs> now? Uh, you, uh... You had to... You're back on Prudential. <laughs> you had to... That's a good policy. Yeah. You had to... Now, at this, at this camp, Beethoven, you had a festival. Oh, Gad, the papaya juice flowed like wine. Did it? <laughs> Mr. Gallup, I didn't know that you were a drinking man. I just drank to be sociable. I knew when to stop. When did you stop? When Feigenbaum's daughter began to look good to me. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, may I say that that was a beautiful myth? And a just myth being very funny. <laughs> Tonight, on tonight with our musical festival as we bring you the sound of spring. <laughs> Thank you.
Romeo Rubinow. <laughs> but it is in the music of spring that we find the true essence of spring. It is the music, and the most beautiful of all music remains Grand Opera. And to prove that once you understand opera, you will love it. We have with us tonight the celebrated operatic contralto, Madame Rosa Lasagna. And to interpret for you what Madame Lasagna will sing is none other than this country's leading libretto translator, Mr. Tulio Finster. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Finster. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Finster, I understand that you will translate as Madame Lasagna sings excerpts from the opera Cavaliero Rostecan. Yes. Of course, it is better known in this country as the Calvin of the Gypsy Crosby, which finds itself going back to the trail without knowing that anybody has patted me back on the sword for our facing bag, which I know is a trap. It's in the key of C. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Finster, would you please set the scene? Gladly. Okay. As the curtain rises, we find ourselves in the kingdom of Samagrodny Five and Gate Forbes. <laughs> the merry villagers run out on the stage in a holiday mood. And why not? It's a Schmalman day. They are dressed in long, flowing gotchas and are singing Hail to the Snug of its life, they call it back. Fine. All right. Would you please go on, Mr. Finster? At this point, Margarita comes on the stage. She's really the Prince of Machayaya, but she's disguised as a grizzly grief. This is because her sweetheart Antonio, the beggar, told her he would like to create a pony with a craven. <laughs> he would like to create a pony with a craven. Who wouldn't? <laughs> and when she sees her lover, she sings. Madame Lasagna, go ahead, please. <laughs> Vino cantonere bungalento bio. Lovely, Madame Lasagna. Quick, Mr. Finster, what did she sing? She sang to her lover, My sweet, my heart, my cave, my silk and fourth man. But Antonio turns his back on her. He had overheard a rumor yeah. that she was seen with a cough and hasn't got a drink. But this man, the takes her back here, die herself. But later she proved she was taking a banjo lesson at the time. May we have the second act, Madame Lasagna, please? Lo ma Superman e Corti Pizzeria Antipasto Bio. Beautiful, beautiful. And what is she saying, Mr. Finster? Her father, King Bruce Morgan Drip, wants her to marry the old Jew. She answers, marry that old slump, too. I can't translate that. Yes, yes, and go on, go on. The king raises his struggle watch over her head and roars, Are you going to marry the Duke? Yes. And she answers, No! <laughs> Mr. Finster, what did she say? She said, uh, maybe. And how does the opera end? Just as Margarita's about to marry the old Duke, Antonio the beggar rushes in, yes. throws off his rags and shouts, Look, I am not Antonio the beggar, I am Belville the whole sucker. <laughs> As they ride into the sunset, the old king shakes his fist and says, You're all a paddock being without my force. Don't take me back for great because right. you think it's Thank a bad thing. There might be a definition for me. Very much. I'll Thank never you very take much, a flag. Thank you. Oh, you have a all right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all right. All right. Thank you. And. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Ken Roberts. <laughs> to you who have been smoking for years and to you who are just beginning to smoke, the words you are about to hear are more important, more authoritative than any you have ever heard about cigarettes. But these words were written by one of America's top-ranking doctors, an eminent nose and throat specialist who knows the scientific facts about smoking. Listen to what the doctor had to say. There is no doubt in my mind that Philip Morris cigarettes are much less irritating than other cigarettes. And now listen to the doctor's conclusion. We would be neglecting our patients who smoke if we did not suggest that they smoke Philip Morris. Remember, if your cigarette leaves your throat dry and parched, if it makes you cough or leaves a stale, musty taste in your mouth, these definitely are reasons for a change to Philip Morris. So join the thousands who every day are joining the millions who have already discovered that a change to Philip Morris is a change to a better cigarette, a finer cigarette, a cigarette of proved superiority. Remember, of all leading cigarettes, the superiority of Philip Morris, and only Philip Morris, 
is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists. No other cigarette can make that statement. Thank you. That was Easter Parade, a part of it, uh, played by Ray Block and the Film Arts Orchestra. And Ray, you're getting so popular, more people have been writing in for your picture because they want to know what you look like. They've been beating up the wrong guy. <laughs> and, and now, as we continue our spring music festival, we present... Music Forum Tonight. Music Forum Tonight. The question, is Carmen Lombardo America's secret weapon? <laughs> Thank you, King Baggett. Let us start with questions from the audience. All right, this gentleman here. Ah, uh, Mr. Burl, I'd like to go into business with you. Business with me? Yes, Easter is coming up. We'll make a fortune. How? You lay them, I'll color them. <laughs> Thank you, John Bunny. Let us get on. Oh. All right, this young man changing from his winter underwear to the Salamese bloomers. Uh, what is your name, young man? My name is Margaret Truman. <laughs> <laughs> down here. Who is this man? Henry Wallace down here? <laughs> your name? You say your name is Margaret Truman? I just took the name when it became popular. I see what you mean. That name Margaret Truman gives me nothing but trouble. Trouble? I keep getting threatening letters from Jessica Dragonette. <laughs> I understand. People keep asking when my old man's porch will be finished so they can come over for a sun bath. <laughs> People pass you because your name is Margaret Truman? Yeah, and also because of my father's name. Now what's your father's name? Beth. <laughs> All right, Margie. You have a question that has to do with music? Yeah, I got a question, but I don't expect an answer from a schnook like you. Well, I just That tin ear of yours will look better on a lunch pail. Lord. Why don't you round up a few A&P gypsies? Maybe you could be another Harry Horlick. Please. The only music you know is the sound of jingling in your money belt. I'm... The only instrument you can play with them big wet lips is a tissue paper and comb. Please. Ah, your mother's tambourine. <laughs> Please, let's not get noisy. Let's get on to the women in our audience. All right, this lady in the aisle sharing a box of kennel rations with her cocker spaniel. <laughs> what is your name, madam? Tallulah Feeney. I'm a homemaker. I see. And you have a question that has to do with music? Yeah, why is my husband always trying to get into an orchestra? He follows musicians around so much they're starting to call him Patrilla. Your husband wants to get into a band? He gave up the plumbing business and got a job with Phil Spitalny. Phil Spitalny? He was known as Feeney and his magic plunger. <laughs> But Phil Spitalny has an all-girl orchestra. How did your husband get in? He lied. <laughs> oh, that's different. But uh, didn't they finally recognize him? Yeah, he gave himself away. After rehearsals, everybody takes a shower. Yes? For the first time in his life, Spitalny had company. <laughs> I get it, I get it. You should see the instruments he's tried to learn. Once he tried to play the triangle, he got stuck. He got stuck in a triangle? Yeah, he's such a square. Oh, I see. <laughs> Once he took up the violin, he decided to make his own violin strings. He made his own strings? Yeah, every night another cat was missing from the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah? Tell me, uh... <laughs> tell me, Mrs... Tell me, Mrs. Feeney, is your husband still musically inclined? Yeah, he's always wanted a trump. <laughs> I finally bought him a new instrument. We'll all be sorry in four weeks. You know that. I finally bought him an instrument and said, here, blow your brains out. You got him a trombone? I got him a <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we keep laughing so we don't get lonesome up here, you know. And now for our musical guest of honor tonight, may I introduce... That great metropolitan opera star, whose powerful, thundering bass voice has rocked opera houses all over the world. The one and only Mario Featherfield. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Featherfield. Thank you, Mr. Burrell. <laughs> My heart brims over for this glorious opportunity to thank the many opera lovers who have seen me sing out front and rushed out and grabbed me backstage. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, I understand that when you sing at the Met, you receive more flowers than any other singer. That's true. There's only one thing wrong. What? All the flowers say, rest in peace. <laughs> 
Mr. Featherfield, how did you get your start in opera? I was assistant to Lawrence Tibbet. He couldn't get along without me. He couldn't? No. Remember when Tibbet used to sing... You were with him? Who do you think tickled him? <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, hearing you talk, isn't your voice a little weak for opera? Oh, I was holding back. You were? Oh. Yes, in Tristan and Isolde, at one place I yelled for Isolde. It was, uh, it was loud, eh? Loud. Mr. Burrell, not only did Asalde come running, but I got a wire from Chloe saying she was on her way, too. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, Mario Featherfield, I'm sorry. We've heard so much about your wife. Has your wife ever appeared with you? Oh, yes, just last week we were both in the big bullfight scene in Carmen. Mm -hmm. I was the bullfighter. I see. And your wife? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the bull. The bull. <laughs> And what a bullfight that must have been. Who? Huh? <laughs> what a fight. The bull came charging low, and the fight was all over. What, what happened? It was the first time in the history of Carmen that the bullfighter won on a foul. Thank you very much, Mr. Featherfield. Thank you. <laughs> now here's our young singing star, Dick Bonney, to sing But Beautiful. Love is funny, or it's sad, or it's quiet, or it's mad. It's a good thing, or it's bad, but beautiful, beautiful to take a chance. And if you fall, you fall And I'm thinking I wouldn't mind at all Love is tearful Or it's good It's a problem Or it's great It's a heartache Either way And I'm thinking, if you were mine, I'd never let you go. And that would be but beautiful, I know. And I'm thinking, if you I'd never let you go And that would be But beautiful I know Well, Dick Barney Well Love is funny Love is grand <laughs> Wonderful, Mr. Gallup. Mr. Gallup, you know, all night we have been on the subject of music, and so far no one's even mentioned that I, Milton Berle, has, have written many, many songs. Oh, no, not that, too. Yes, Mr. Gallup. He right. has 14 toes, a mother who laughs, and now he writes songs, too. How great can one man please, get? Please, Mr. Gallup, please don't aggravate me. I had enough aggravation on the first song that I ever wrote. I'll never forget... It was a few years ago. I, I was at home uh, playing the piano and doodling around the piano, and my wife and I were sitting. Milton, it's after midnight. Dear, please, I'm concentrating. With that piano going, people will think this is a saloon. We'll be swamped with television fans. <laughs> Listen to this, darling. I, I just wrote a song. No, not now. The Harrisons next door are asleep. I, I'll be quiet. Listen. I was a wabbit, a fuzzy, fuzzy wabbit. Hop, hop, little bunny. Hop, hop, little bunny. Hop, hop, ho, ho, hop, hop. <laughs> well, dear? Milton, why are you so stubborn about seeing a psychiatrist? <laughs> 
Not that again. Now, look, I, I just wrote a little tune at... Oh. Hello? Sam Harrison? You heard me singing. Well, look, look Sam, I, I'm sorry I woke you and Martha. I... You're coming over. Sam! S Sam! Oh, no. He and Martha are coming over. You go to bed, dear. I'll handle them. Good night. Good night, Hoagie. <laughs> Hoagie. I write a tune for my own enjoyment, and the way they pounce on me, you think I just started a third party. Here they come, the Ozzie and Harriet of Jackson Heights. <laughs> come in. Hi, El Milty! <laughs> Sa Sam, I'm sorry I sang and I woke you and Martha up. Milty, I'm... when I heard that song, I said, that's the most beautiful thing I ever heard since Toot Toot Tootsie Goodbye. Isn't that just what I said, Martha? Yes. <laughs> oh, hello, Martha. I didn't recognize you in that smoking jacket. <laughs> Sam, that's just a little nothing I wrote. He wrote it himself. Did you hear that, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Martha, please, don't get so excited. <laughs> Look, the song is nothing. Milty, that song is great. I should know. I wrote songs myself. On our honeymoon in Niagara Falls, I wrote love songs to Martha. Remember our honeymoon, Martha. Yes. <laughs> Sam, please, it's getting late. I will, Boabbe. A buzzy. Oh, Milty, I'm taking you to see my friend Felix Entwistle. He'll get your song published. Sam, forget about Milton it. Milton Burr, you can't do this to the music world. Sam. To the public, you're a man loved because of your genius, your wonderful talent. Sam. <laughs> you have a soul. A, a soul for music matched only by your graciousness and humility. Oh, is that? <laughs> but you're still a two-fisted leader of men. Sam! <laughs> Milty, your music is matched only by your handsomeness, savoir-faire, and charm. Oh, Sam, you're terrible. <laughs> Milty! Milty, tomorrow you're taking your song to Felix Entwistle. Oh, all right, Sam. See, it's awful how you get around to me with that flattery. <laughs> Deep down, I know I'm just a heel. Yes. <laughs> you stay out of this. Milton, here's Felix's office. Gee, look at that door, Sam. It says Felix Entwistle. Music publishing, notary public, eyes examined free, plain pipe racks, habla espanol, open all night. <laughs> Sam, l let's go. The last time I went through a door like that, I came out with a year's subscription to Boy's Life and a 1922 Chalmers. Now, let's go in, Milty. When Phoenix finds out you're a friend of mine, he'll fall all over you. Come on in. Sam, it's just a little song. Here, here comes Felix. Watch his face light up. Felix! It's me, Sam! Oh, Sam, for you. <laughs> Sam, let's go. Felix, this is Milty Burl. <laughs> Hello? Who needs you? Sam, let's go. Felix, Milty has a song I want you to hear. Who asked you? Milty will publish it with his own money. I liked him the minute it came in. <laughs> Let go of my lapel. Let me hear the song. If it isn't good, I'll tell you. And I won't take a cent from you. Oh, okay. I... Stop! It's good. <laughs> good? <laughs> then why are you holding your nose? I'm trying to stop the tears from welling up into my eyes. That's how great it is. Uh, really? Of course, we'll have to make a few changes. Changes? It's just a little tune for, for children. That's what's wrong. The children buy sheet music? The children buy records? No, they're notorious for having no money. <laughs> yeah, there's such cheap... Look, it's just a little... Stop! I got it. Rumbers are big now. For $1,000, we'll have it published as a rumba. Never have I been so touched by a song. A thousand dollars? Never have I been so touched. A rumba. It's just a little song. And it's... It's... Now we're ready for you, Burl. Look, Entwistle, did you have to hire a rehearsal hall and a band? A man who's got a hit rumba, what's another thousand? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Let's try it. Hit it, Carmen. <laughs> It's just a number, a rumba for... It's, it's a... <laughs> it's just for kiddies, the song. <laughs> Wabbit! It's the fuzzy little fuzzy wuzzy fuzzy 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 little fuzzy little wap. It's a little song for kiddies. Stop the music! Stop it, please! That This is ridiculous. Pearl, you're right. Here we've been knocking ourselves out with a rumba. What is the world crying for? A song with social significance. It is? Now, for $2,000, we can rearrange your song. Yeah. 2000 It's just a little song. I wobble wabbit. It's just a little song.
Attention, everybody. Ready, Burl? Uh, Entwistle, a chorus of 50 and an orchestra of 200. Six arranges just for I, one the wabbit. Wait till the world hears this, Burl. Hit it, Arturo. <laughs> I was a wabbit. Are you listening, Joe? A fuzzy with a wabbit. Are you listening, Eddie? Just a little old rabbit. But he was my friend. And from him I learned that life is a song and we all play a part. There's the dream of the love of a clown. Then one day I, I came back to my room and he was gone. Gone, do you hear me? Gone, gone, gone. Then one day I saw him again on the Bowery. I rushed over. I picked him up in my arms. And then that wonderful moment when he opened his pink little eyes, looked at me and he said... Ah, what's up, Doc? Stop, stop! This is ridiculous. You're right, Burl. This song is too big to be just a song. Too big? Yes. We're making it into an opera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an opera? <laughs> no, look, please. I don't want to be a songwriter. I'm broke. Broke? Yes. Burl, I got news for you. What? You're no longer a songwriter. Throw this bum out of No, here. no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. And now, here's Ken Roberts. Friends, remember the words of the eminent nose and throat specialist whose statement you heard a little while ago. We would be neglecting our patients who smoke if we did not suggest that they smoke Philip Morris. Yes, there's a difference in Philip Morris that distinguishes it from any other leading brand. And to you, that difference means a cleaner smoke, a fresher, milder smoke than you've ever known before. Remember, of all leading cigarettes, the superiority of Philip Morris and only Philip Morris is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists. No other cigarette can make that statement. This is your girlfriend, Milton, saying good night. See you next Tuesday. Good night, Mom. Good night. This is Johnny again, standing now to the thousands of gold windows and towers all over America. Look for me. I'll be waiting for you. Come in and... For a cleaner, fresher, milder smoke, join the millions who call for Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.